Neuroleptic Malignant Syndrome, Wikipedia Article Audio Neuroleptic Malignant Syndrome is a life-threatening reaction that occasionally occurs in response to neuroleptic or antipsychotic medication. Symptoms include high fever, confusion, rigid muscles, variable blood pressure, sweating, and fast heart rate. Complications may include rhabdomyolysis, high blood potassium, kidney failure, or seizures. Signs and Symptoms Causes Risk Factors Pathophysiology Diagnosis Differential Diagnosis Treatment Prognosis Epidemiology History Research Any medications within the family of neuroleptics can cause the condition, though typical antipsychotics appear to have a higher risk than atypicals. Onset is often within a few weeks of starting the medication but can occur at any time. Risk factors include dehydration, agitation, and catatonia. Rapidly decreasing the use of levodopa may also trigger the condition. The underlying mechanism involves blockage of dopamine receptors. Diagnosis is based on symptoms. Management includes stopping the offending medication, rapid cooling, and starting other medications. Medications used include dantrolene, bromocryptine, and diazepam. The risk of death among those affected is about 10%. Many people can eventually be restarted on a lower dose of antipsychotic. Among those in psychiatric hospitals on neuroleptics about 15 per 100,000 are affected per year. Males appear to be more often affected than females. In the second half of the 20th century rates were higher at about 2% of people in hospital per year. The condition was first described in 1956. The first symptoms of neuroleptic malignant syndrome are usually muscle cramps and tremors, fever, symptoms of autonomic nervous system instability such as unstable blood pressure, and sudden changes in mental status. Once symptoms appear, they may progress rapidly and reach peak intensity in as little as three days. These symptoms can last anywhere from 8 hours to 40 days. Symptoms are sometimes misinterpreted by doctors as symptoms of mental illness which can result in delayed treatment. NMS is less likely if a person has previously been stable for a period of time on antipsychotics especially in situations where the dose has not been changed and there are no issues of non-compliance or consumption of psychoactive substances known to worsen psychosis. NMS is usually caused by antipsychotic drug use, and a wide range of drugs can result in NMS. Individuals using buterophenones or phenothiazines are reported to be at greatest risk. However, Various atypical antipsychotics such as clozapine, olanzapine, risperidone, quishapine, and ziprazidone have also been implicated in cases. NMS may also occur in people taking dopaminergic drugs for Parkinson's disease, most often when the drug dosage is abruptly reduced. In addition, other drugs with antidopaminergic activity, such as the antiemetic metoclopramide, can induce NMS. Even drugs without known antidopaminergic activity have been associated with NMS, examples include amoxapines and lithium. Also, desipramine, duthiapin, phenylzine, tetrabenazine, and reserpine have been known to trigger NMS. At the molecular level, NMS is caused by a sudden, marked reduction in dopamine activity, either from withdrawal of dopaminergic agents or from blockade of dopamine receptors. 
One of the clearest risk factors in the development of NMS is the course of drug therapy chosen to treat a condition. Use of high-potency neuroleptics, a rapid increase in the dosage of neuroleptics, and use of long-acting forms of neuroleptics are all known to increase the risk of developing NMS. It has been purported that there is a genetic risk factor for NMS, since identical twins have both presented with NMS in one case, and a mother and two of her daughters have presented with NMS in another case. Demographically, it appears that males, especially those under 40, are at greatest risk for developing NMS, although it is unclear if the increased incidence is a result of greater neuroleptic use in men under 40. It has also been suggested that postpartum women may be at a greater risk for NMS. An important risk factor for this condition is Lewy body dementia. These patients are extremely sensitive to neuroleptics. As a result, neuroleptics should be used cautiously in all cases of dementia. The mechanism is thought to depend on decreased levels of dopamine activity due to it has been proposed that blockade of D2-like receptors induce massive glutamate release, generating catatonia, neurotoxicity, and myotoxicity. Additionally, the blockade of diverse serotonin receptors by atypical antipsychotics and activation of 5-HT1 receptors by certain of them reduces GABA release and indirectly induces glutamate release, worsening this syndrome. The muscular symptoms are most likely caused by blockade of the dopamine receptor D2, leading to abnormal function of the basal ganglia similar to that seen in Parkinson's disease. However, the failure of D2 dopamine receptor antagonism or dopamine receptor dysfunction does not fully explain the presenting symptoms and signs of NMS as well as the occurrence of NMS with atypical antipsychotic drugs with lower D2 dopamine activity. This has led to the hypothesis of sympathoadrenal hyperactivity as a mechanism for NMS. Release of calcium is increased from the sarcoplasmic reticulum with antipsychotic usage. This can result in increased muscle contractility which can play a role in the breakdown of muscle, muscle rigidity, and hyperthermia. Some antipsychotic drugs, such as typical neuroleptics, are known to block dopamine receptors. Other studies have shown that when drugs supplying dopamine are withdrawn, symptoms similar to NMS present themselves. There is also thought to be considerable overlap between malignant catatonia and NMS in their pathophysiology, the former being idiopathic and the latter being the drug-induced form of the same syndrome. The raised white blood cell count and creatine phosphokinase plasma concentration seen in those with NMS is due to increased muscular activity and rhabdomyolysis. The patient may suffer hypertensive crisis and metabolic acidosis. A non-generalized slowing on an EEG is reported in around 50% of cases. The fever seen with NMS is believed to be caused by hypothalamic dopamine receptor blockade. The peripheral problems are caused by the antipsychotic drugs. They cause an increased calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum of muscle cells which can result in rigidity and eventual cell breakdown. No major studies have reported an explanation for the abnormal EEG, but it is likely also attributable to dopamine blockage leading to changes in neuronal pathways. Differentiating NMS from other neurological disorders can be very difficult. It requires expert judgment to separate symptoms of NMS from other diseases. Some of the most commonly mistaken diseases are encephalitis, toxic encephalopathy, status epilepticus, heat stroke, and malignant hyperthermia. Due to the comparative rarity of NMS, it is often overlooked and immediate treatment for the syndrome is delayed. 
Drugs such as cocaine and amphetamine may also produce similar symptoms. The differential diagnosis is similar to that of hyperthermia, and includes serotonin syndrome. Features which distinguish NMS from serotonin syndrome include bradykinesia, muscle rigidity, and a high white blood cell count. NMS is a medical emergency and can lead to death if untreated. The first step is to stop the antipsychotic medication and treat the hyperthermia aggressively, such as with cooling blankets or ice packs to the axillae and groin. Supportive care in an intensive care unit capable of circulatory and ventilatory support is crucial. The best pharmacological treatment is still unclear. Dantrolene has been used when needed to reduce muscle rigidity, and more recently dopamine pathway medications such as bromocryptine have shown benefit. Amantadine is another treatment option due to its dopaminergic and anticholinergic effects. Apomorphine may be used however its use is supported by little evidence. Benzodiazepines may be used to control agitation. Highly elevated blood myoglobin levels can result in kidney damage, therefore aggressive intravenous hydration with diuresis may be required. When recognized early NMS can be successfully managed, however, up to 10% of cases can be fatal. Should a patient subsequently require an antipsychotic, trialing a low dose of a low-potency atypical antipsychotic is recommended. The prognosis is best when identified early and treated aggressively. In these cases NMS is not usually fatal. In previous studies the mortality rates from NMS have ranged from 20% 38%, however, in the last two decades, mortality rates have fallen below 10% due to early recognition and improved management. Reintroduction to the drug that originally caused NMS to develop may also trigger a recurrence, although in most cases it does not. Memory impairment is a consistent feature of recovery from NMS, and usually temporary, though in some cases, may become persistent. Pooled data suggest the incidence of NMS is between 0.2% 3.23%. However, more physician awareness coupled with increased use of atypical antipsychotics have likely reduced the prevalence of NMS. Additionally, young males are particularly susceptible and the male-female ratio has been reported to be as high as 2 colon 1. NMS was known about as early as 1956, shortly after the introduction of the first phenothiazines. NMS was first described in 1960 by French clinicians who had been working on a study involving haloperidol. They characterized the condition that was associated with the side effects of haloperidol syndrome malande neuroleptux which was translated to neuroleptic malignant syndrome. While the pathophysiology of NMS remains unclear, the two most prevalent theories are. In the past, research and clinical studies seemed to corroborate the D2 receptor blockade theory in which antipsychotic drugs were thought to significantly reduce dopamine activity by blocking the D2 receptors associated with this neurotransmitter. However, recent studies indicate a genetic component to the condition. In support of the sympathoadrenal hyperactivity model proposed, it has been hypothesized that a defect in calcium regulatory proteins within the sympathetic neurons may bring about the onset of NMS. This model of NMS strengthens its suspected association with malignant hyperthermia in which NMS may be regarded as a neurogenic form of this condition which itself is linked to defective calcium-related proteins. The introduction of atypical antipsychotic drugs with lower affinity to the D2 dopamine receptors, were thought to have reduced the incidence of NMS. However, 
recent studies suggest that the decrease in mortality may be the result of increased physician awareness and earlier initiation of treatment rather than the action of the drugs themselves. NMS induced by atypical drugs also resembles classical NMS, further casting doubt on the overall superiority of these drugs. Increased body temperature greater than 38 degrees C, or, confused or altered consciousness, sweating, rigid muscles, autonomic imbalance. Dopamine receptor blockade, genetically reduced function of dopamine receptor D2. Reduced dopamine activity due to receptor blockade, sympathodrenal hyperactivity and autonomic dysfunction. 9's Neuroleptic Malignant Syndrome Information Page NIH, Canadian Movement Disorder Group Commanding Org, nmscurrentpsychiatry.com, Instructional Video for Detection of NMS Medical Instructional Media